how's it going guys so we got kind of a rainy nasty week wasn't really what i was expecting was hoping to get out and do some field work uh, we got some guys here today installing the curtains on our special needs barn there kind of the last step to finish that project up we're actually missing a couple boards that should have been put on the back wall for them to be able to put their curtain on there i'm just going to go pick up three eight foot two by sixes to do that job we got a week of rain and then a nice week now another week of rain it's going to be getting nicer by tomorrow though we have some shell corn we want to harvest there's one of the fields right there should be getting down under 20 percent so i went and picked up those two by sixes they just need to have boards across the center of this so they can hang those two curtains that go on there yesterday we finished up our second ag bag of triticale opened up the last one Pretty good stuff so i noticed this barn needs to be bed up I'm trying to make sure i put enough bedding in for this youngest group this group's been doing really well we moved them out here a few weeks ago tomorrow we want to move some young ones in so i want to make sure this is bed up for that too We cleaned this out over a month ago. We haven't put any sawdust in at this end at all. This will be the first time. Now that we've been getting some cooler weather, the fans aren't running all the time. I'll turn it off to put bedding in there. Got the barn bed up. Guess I forgot to turn the fans back on. I had mentioned a while back that we got activity monitoring for our breeding age heifers now. So we just have these little ear tags. You can see them. We put them on around 11 months old. Keep them on until they are pregnant. I've only had them on for about a month, but I've had some good success so far from what we're seeing. Uh, it's just tracking their movement all the time. And so I can tell when they're not eating as much and their activity goes up when their heat started. So it's been pretty nice not having to watch heifers for heats. They uh, just show up on my phone and then I can know exactly when to breed them. My phone's telling me that there's one in heat right now, number 27. She's just about 12 months old. I wanted to see if she's big enough to breed. It's her right there. We like to breed them usually right around 13 months old is the ideal time. If they're big enough, 12 months is good. She seems a little bit on the smaller side. I think I'm just gonna let her go. The nice thing is the system will pick her next heat up again. It'll be about three weeks from now. Pretty amazing what technology can do. The biggest thing is now we're gonna be getting them bred at the right time before we were missing them, letting them get too old. And if they get up to 14 months, you're, you're just feeding them for an extra month there with no real value. They're getting bigger, but there's no reason for them to get too big. That feed cost really adds up over time if you're feeding the heifers all for an extra month. So yeah, that's one thing with artificial insemination. You wanna make sure you're catching the breeding window at the right time. This system's been awesome. We have that. Uh, all flexes the system. There's a monitor right there that's reading the tags, sending the information up to our barn office over there. And then that's also linked up to my app that I can see on my phone. I'll show you what the app looks like. Gives me a list of heifers that would be in heat. 
So right now number 27, she's 361 days old. And that gives a breeding window there. So right now we are 20 hours from the predicted ovulation. Um, so somewhere between hour 23 and hour 7 is the best time to breed them. So if I did want to breed that heifer, we'd have a nice window here anytime from this morning through this evening. I grabbed a five gallon bucket here. I'm going to go out and check our grain corn fields, see where they're at. Come on, Duchess. Come on. It's kind of nice we sprayed fungicide. We got these nice paths through the Edinburgh rows, getting to the center of the field easier. It's been five years since we did any shell corn. I'm really not too familiar with it as far as how it acts after rain and things. Right now, after we've had some rain the last couple days, I don't know what that's gonna do for the moisture. These ears stay on the stalks pretty good. Just amazed how well these ears filled out. It turtles the way up to the top. You want to have a small corn cob, it means there's more grain in there, deeper kernels. I'm going to count them here, how many round? That one's 18 around, that's a pretty good sized ear. The nice thing with having a grain business right across the road, just go in there and use their moisture tester. So it's the next morning here. So I was talking about these ear tag trackers. We only have 30 of them that we're gonna just use as the animals come up through. We'll take them off the older ones once they're pregnant, put them on the younger ones. So we're gonna go ahead and cut some tags off today because we wanna move heifers. I'm here with Andrew again. Hey guys. You've seen him a couple times. So he actually just got engaged to my sister Cassidy this past week, so he's joining the family. You'll probably see him around more. We're just gonna cut the tags off some pregnant heifers here. So number 990. One, four, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen. We just cut seven tags off. They were bred about thirty days ago. We got them blood tested tested pregnant so we knew they're good to go. So I'll have to go into the computer and enter in that these don't have a heifer assigned to them anymore and then we'll be able to put them on different animals and reassign them. We're gonna move those heifers then, but uh, a couple other things to do first. We have some soybeans on the way today. We feed toasted beans out of this bin. What's that? That's hollow up there and then it... So you think it might be... No, it's probably, I think it's like here. Okay. We're buying some different soybeans. They're high oleic soybeans. It's supposed to be better for dairy cows, help produce better components in the milk. I'm bringing them in today and we have a little bit left in our bin of the other type of soybeans, the normal type. We'd like to have that all cleared out so we can fill this bin full of the new type. We got 1,600 bushels on the way, so they're not all gonna fit in there. We're gonna have to pile some uh, in that second to last bay. We'll put the rest in there. But I don't really wanna mix the two type of beans, so we're gonna clear these out. I guess just pile them in front of the soybean meal. I was thinking they were down into the cone, but they might be a little bit above it. If that's the case, it's still a decent amount in there. It doesn't come out that fast. I climbed up here to open up this door a while. And uh, yeah, it's just a little bit above the cone on the bottom. See, we had to take these beans now because they got harvested and they're gonna toast them and roll them, but they don't have a place to store them because they're not the regular beans. So we have to take them right away. Normally we just wait till this bin's empty to order something. There's a bit more in this bin than I was hoping. I'll put some here, but we do have a small gravity bin we have sitting around. Really can't pile too much here because we have to drive over it to get back to the soybean meal. We're just gonna bring that small gravity bin over and put it all in there probably a better way to do it. Then we can park it in the shed and feed it later. I think it still holds there. It's just... Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's still broke. Got three good tires and the one just loses air slowly. Get a little bit of dirt in here to brush out. Yeah, that'll work. 
just gonna let that bin run. It's kind of a slow process. We wanna work here in the milking parlor. Every five months we have to replace the inflations on our milkers. So these are silicone inflations or liners and they slowly get stretched and worn out over time so they have to be replaced. So we're just turning this. Comes apart. Okay. Oh. oh, so you're replacing the whole thing. Yeah, so the, the shells will get reused, but, yeah, they, but then. they pull the inflations through other shells and send us the whole set, so we don't wow. have to worry about that. We just send these back. Yes, put them out of the way. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll get some fun. soapy water and brush these up. I like to clean them up. Yes. I'll go get the box of All right. new ones. Okay. Andrew's working at dismantling them. Now I'm getting some soapy water. Just like to wash the unit up when we have it apart like this. We're getting after those inflations. Let's see how this bin is doing. This would have been a lot of skid loader buckets. We got all the old ones off and cleaned these up. Now we're starting to put the new ones on. We have 14 milkers in our parlor milking 180 cows three times a day. So every farm's gonna be different as far as when you have to change them. For us, it works out to be every five months. So the way these inflations work, you have a vacuum coming through uh, the milker, and then there's a pulsation line as well. That's what these are, and they actually create a pulse of air inside of this hard shell. There's this soft rubber continues underneath the shell, and then it can kind of squeeze the teeth, sort of like if you're milking a cow by hand. It's just a lot more efficient, and uh, it's comfortable for the cows. Starting to feel hollow. We got the milkers all done. Bin is almost empty. We're gonna try to pack it in the top of this gravity bin. We'll just let these sit in the shed for a while. Got the trailer hooked up. We're gonna get to moving these heifers. Yesterday they installed the curtains on this barn. Got a new curtain going the whole way down through there now. Today they're putting the second ceiling fan in here from Amerowind. We got that one over the special needs. We want a second one over on this side. We're gonna load up those eight pregnant heifers. Take them to the other farm.
We don't have any to bring home today. We took eight out of the big group, so now we'll just, all those pens are eight, so we just bring them down through. Hey girls. Now we're ready to get the calves. We got nine, we're gonna move out. I like to chase them all up front and make sure they know how to step over the curb onto the slats. He's finishing uh, wiring up this fan. Should be ready to go. Just went and turned the breaker back on. And it looks like it's working. I like it. We like them a lot. They, they seem to move air across the pen really well. Down on the cowls, in between the cowls. Does help dry the bedding out a bit. These pens, with there being adult milking cows in here, they make more of a mess and so they add quite a bit of bedding, but it, it does help a bit. I don't know if it's 25% less bedding in here, but it's maybe 20%, something like that. Just noticed there's a heifer in here starting to calve. Wanna sort her out. Yeah, we just let her in there for now. So that officially wraps up this building project. Getting these curtains put on and that second fan was the last thing. We had them reuse the curtains from that side. They weren't in too bad a shape, so we put a brand new one across the whole front and then used them back here. It's not as big of a section, but it's nice to be able to open it up. Didn't want to just put metal in that area. Make sure you check out the uh, new merch we have, new hoodies, some other things there. I think they're pretty nice. Appreciate it, guys.